Hello everyone, let me introduce myself. I am Facundo Carvalho, and today we will see how to connect a Golang server with a MySQL database. The idea of this video is that we can see how we can insert data to our database from the server and how to retrieve data from the database to the server. So in this video, we will see examples like inserting a user with an email, a password and a name for that user with a simple table in our database using our Golang server and also how to retrieve all the users from our database using the server, the Golang server. It's a simple video, but so you can set the basics of how to connect a Golang server to a database and then you can start developing what you want. Before I leave you with the video, I want to tell you that if you like these kind of videos, you can hit the like button and subscribe to my channel because that helps me a lot to grow up on YouTube. If we go to the repository readme, we will find the following. The first things to do in any Golang program is to execute the command go mod init with your repo URL. Before starting any program in Go, I recommend that you create a repository associated with it so that at this step, you can already add the URL to the corresponding repo. Next, we initialize the repository with this command, git init. And finally, we install all the packages that we will need to run in our server to connect with my SQL database. The only package that we need per C is the go sql driver i also install the go.env package to use environment variables and avoid putting sensitive information inside of the code the first thing we need to do is connect the server with mysql database for those who don't know how to create and run a mysql database i recommend this free code camp video where they explain very well and in detail how to do it and the basics of MySQL database. To establish the connection, we must execute the open function from the database SQL package. We pass the name of the driver we need to execute as the first parameter and the DSN of our database as the second parameter. DSN, data source name, is a term commonly used in the context of databases and refers to a name used to identify and access to a specific data source. In this case, if we go to the DV package and view the get DSN function, we will see that the DSN usually has the following form. You can obtain all this data from your MySQL by accessing to this section. Returning to the main function, if for some reason there is an error in the database connection, it will execute the panic function, displaying the error on the console and terminating the Golang server process. We use Golang reserved word defer to instruct our process that when the function ends, execute database.close. In other words, we make sure that when the server ends, the server before to end will close the connection to the database. Finally, we check that the connection to the database was successful by executing database.ping. This function returns a pointer to an error or just a null pointer. If the pointer is null, it means that there is no such error. So we can continue with our server. Otherwise, we execute the panic function, passing the obtained error as a parameter to display it on the console and terminate the program execution. Now we can set our server to listen for client request. We expose our route in this simple API. In this case, we expose the route slash user. Every time it is invoked, whatever with a post get update delete method or any other method, it will end up executing the handle user function located within the types packages. This function takes parameters such as the response writer, the request, and an instance of the connection with the database. The response writer is a Golang interface from the HTTP package that allows us to send response to the client from the server. This is where we will write the response that we want to send to the client. Meanwhile, the request 
is a Golang structure from the HTTP package 2. That structure allows us as a server to know exactly what requests the clients made. This structure enables us to know which parameters were used, which method was executed, if any special data was sent in the header, such as JWT, read the request body, and another things. If we delve into the function, we see that it will evaluate if it's a post method, it will execute a certain function. And on the other hand, if it's a get method, it will execute another function. Therefore, if we send any other type of method to this slash user endpoint, the server will do absolutely nothing and respond to the client with an error message explaining that the attempted method is not considered because we simply didn't define it in the code. When the client sent a post request to the slash user endpoint, the server understands that it needs to create a new user in the database. To create this user, it needs to have the necessary data to insert it correctly into the database. In this case, our user table has the following structure. To obtain this data from the new user to create, the server assumes that these data are included in the body of the request sent by the client. So we read the body using the read all function from the IO package. If there is an error reading the body, we inform the client that the body could not be read correctly and terminate the execution of this request. Now that we have the body, we want to transform it into a user data type. For this, we use the function that I created called body to user, which converts from a byte array to a specific data type, in this case, user. If we look at the body to user function, we will see that it simply does a JSON that on Marshall copying all the information into a user type pointer and then returns that pointer with the loaded information. This type of function that converts from JSON to a data type is possible thanks to defining the user data type, specifying how each attribute keys of the data type will be in a JSON format, as you can see on the screen. Continuing with the create user function, we move on to execute a query into the database. For that, we use the exec function of the database instance that we receive as a parameter, where basically we send this query as a parameter. Those question marks signify that the values will be the values of the following parameters respectively. That is, the second parameter of the exec function is name. Well, name correspond to the first question mark, email correspond to the second question mark, and password correspond to the third question mark. If for any reason there is an error executing this query in the database, we notify it to the client. Otherwise, we let them know that the request was proceeded correctly and send them the message. Now, we will see the both method in action using the Postman tool. To do that, first we have to create a JSON into Postman, into the Postman tool. So we create this JSON and then with Postman we'll send that JSON to the server and the server will, will insert that data into our user table. We execute the post method in Postman and we observe that the server responds with a successful message. And finally, we can check in the database that the user we recently added has been inserted correctly. In this case, where the client sends a GET request, the get all user method will be invoked, which takes the response writer and the instance of the connection to our database as parameters. Inside the get all user function, we see that the first thing we do is a SQL query, selecting the ID, name, and email columns from the user table. We check if there was any error in the query, and if not, we continue with our function. We apply the differ rows that close to release the resources associated with these rows once our function finish. We create a vector of users where the, all the users obtained from the query will be stored in that particular vector or array. Now 
we iterate through each row of it in the query and create a user by scanning the data of each user from the rows variable. Finally, adding it to the vector of users. If there is any error while reading some of the users obtained from the query, we will send to the client a response with an internal server error. Once it is verified that there are no errors, we can respond to the client correctly by sending them the users we obtained from the database. To confirm that this method works correctly, we can go to our browser and enter localhost where we are running our server specifically at the user endpoint. Remembering that when a browser visits a URL, it's making a GET request to that URL. We see that we obtain the JSON with the data of the users that we store in our database. We can also perform the same action with Postman by applying a GET method to localhost and a specific endpoint. And we can observe that they are exactly the same data that we have in our database and the data that we get from our browser. And well, that's all for this video. I hope that you enjoyed that. And well, if you like these kind of videos again, I'll ask you to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel because that helps me to grow up on YouTube. And well, see you on the next video.